Today on Home Care Heroes, we have a master class in how to get people to your website and keep them there. We have Jason Shagnon from Providentia Marketing and Cameron Nasser from AidQuest. This is a podcast you don't want to miss. Welcome to the Home Care Heroes podcast, featuring trending topics and practical wisdom for success in home care. Here's your host, Ken Accardi. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of Home Care Heroes. I'm very excited about it. I feel like today we're going to have the equivalent of a master class with two special guests who have been on the podcast before. We have Jason Shagnon. Jason runs Providentia Marketing and he makes home care websites and works with home care agencies to really optimize their websites for finding clients, finding caregivers and being found on Google and all those types of things. So that's uh, Jason. And we also have Cameron Nasser. We've actually had Cameron on a few times. The first time he told the story of his home care agency, Nueva Care, in the San Francisco Bay Area, which turned out to be one of the fastest growing companies in the U.S. in a very competitive home care market. And he actually put out a book that's called Caring for Millions. And we went through that book and uh, really enjoyed that podcast. But now Cameron has sold the agency. And he is starting on a new endeavor, which was inspired by one of his innovations at the time. And what he's done, we're going to hear more about this in a little bit, but he has come up with a capability to integrate live chat into your home care website. And of course, you know, and you'll hear more about this, but the goal of that is that when people get to your website, you want to engage them right away and give them an opportunity to engage with you, whether they be a client or a caregiver to learn more about your services and get signed up with you. So I'm really, really excited about that. And the topic of today is going to be, you know, really, um, you know, how do we get found on the internet? And then how do we get people, how do we get those visitors to engage with us? And I wanna start by seeing if we agree on two things. So the first thing is that, first of all, most people start their search for home care by doing a Google search at the end of the day. And a lot of times it's not, the person who needs the care. My mom happens to be 84 and she is um, dealing with Alzheimer's and that type of thing. So if we were getting care for my mom, it would be me calling or one of my sisters calling. And then the second premise is that we really have to think of our home care sites more and more in 2021 and into the future as being places not only to find clients or have clients find us, but to have caregivers find us. Because I would say in our experience at Ancoda working with home care agencies, the small agencies, they say, well, we're small because we can't get clients. But the big agencies, they say, you know, we're big because we have the caregivers. And, you know, and if you have the caregivers, you're going to get the clients. So it is sort of a, a thing. But let me start with, with actually Cameron. So, you know, you ran this very successful agency. What do you think of these two premises that people are going to Google you and that it's just as important for caregivers to find you as it is for clients to find you in this day and age? Well, I think it's absolutely right. Uh, so when I started my agency in 2012, things were a little different. Uh, Google was not as pervasive. Online search wasn't as pervasive. People still uh, uh, got uh, referred to us by word of mouth uh, you know, at the beginning. But things really changed quickly around 2015, 2016. What we noticed was that even when we did uh, face-to-face marketing. We went to hospitals, you know, skilled nursing facilities. Even when they referred to us, they went to search us online before they actually uh, wanted to uh, call us or get engaged with us. So uh, a lot of search was done online as uh, as time passed. And by the time I sold my agency, two thousand and nineteen, I can tell you, I, almost everyone. I don't think we had a client who didn't actually research us online before they either called us or they, you know, they got somehow connected to us. So, uh, so that that I I agree with that. And also uh, what we found out is that caregivers just look for work online. That's, that's what they did uh, when I ran my agency. And as you mentioned, uh, we had our own life uh, solution and we were actually getting quite a few applicants through the live chat 
But what's funny is that uh, in 2017, we decided we don't want to get those applications because, because we had so many caregivers, mm -hmm. which is completely a different story now. <laughs> so the market has completely changed. So, but I think that was, that was a good insight because now we're using that insight to actually generate uh, caregiver applications for our home care agency clients. Amazing. Well, that's that's really, really good. And then let me just pass the same question over to Jason. And I really didn't welcome you guys. So welcome, Jason, first of all. And what do you think of these two premises about people starting their journey to find home care for their family member through Google and the importance of also making your site attractive to caregivers? Well, I agree with everything that, that Cameron said, <laughs> Boris. And thank you very much for having us here. We're, we're very excited to join you as well. So it's nice to be here again. Um, but thinking about what Cameron just said, you know, my background was actually owning and operating a, a staffing agency before I started Providentia. So our life was all about finding new clients, but then finding the applicants to fill those jobs. And back in about 2009, 2010 is when we started to see a shift online. And we really started to succeed because we were kind of ahead of the curve in terms of having our job uh, openings on our website and attracting people there. But then we found that that actually was positioning us in a, in a way that set us apart as a higher quality staffing agency than some of our competitors because of the, the image and branding that we were able to put online. So we sold that business in 2014. And since then, we've been helping home care agencies succeed online with this, some of the same principles. And of course, now we're seeing so many of our clients that we talk to or, or prospects that are coming on are saying, we could take on more clients if we had more caregivers. So that falls right into our wheelhouse to, to help them succeed online. Amazing. Well, let's stick with you, Jason. And again, in Providentia Marketing, you're doing exactly what you described. You're helping with websites. So could you demystify for us a little bit? I mean, what do you, you know, what does it take to get your website found on Google? Let's just start with that very simple question. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a simple question mm. and you could ask a hundred people, get a hundred different answers. Mm. And I think there seems to be some reason behind making SEO sound really complicated. Uh, we like to make it very clear and simple. I often just think of the analogy of you know, when you ask, when you're looking for a new service or let's say a new restaurant, you wanna try a new restaurant, you ask some of your friends for recommendations and they might give you two or three recommendations. Now they have a reason for recommending them. Well, Google is like that friend. So most of us will go to Google or we'll go to Bing and say, I'm looking for home care near me, something like that. And Google then is going to recommend a few on that first page. You'll see two or three or seven uh, different listings there. So SEO from our standpoint at Providentia, the way we define it is just the strategies we use to get Google to recommend your home care agency. Simple. Perfect. And then just to uh, clarify, SEO stands for search engine optimization. So this is a this is a term and this is all about getting found. So I guess just, you know, continuing in the demystification. So <clears throat> I think a lot of people come to you and they say, okay, well, I have a website, but what do I do now to, to tell Google about it and all that sort of thing? So um, is it that, you know, you have to go tell Google about it or is it that Google's going to find it on their own and, you know, kind of talk a little bit more about that? It's a little bit of both. So <laughs> there's a lot of strategies, but the first thing we do is diagnose, is that really the problem? Because um, we've had a lot of clients come on and they say, we're just not getting leads from our website. We need more traffic. And the truth is they have plenty of traffic, but their website needs <laughs> on converting. On the other side, they may have a beautiful website and have spent a lot of money on it and they don't know why it's converting. And it turns out they don't have any traffic. So it's about figuring out first, do they need more traffic or more conversions? But um, one of the easiest, I guess I call it low hanging fruit for telling Google that you're good is getting more online reviews. It's one of the most visible things to Google. If you think about that friend recommending a restaurant, they may have gone there and they enjoyed it or they heard good things about it. If you have lots of positive reviews on Google, that's Google hearing good things about you. And it works really well for conversions because now somebody did a, did a search and right front and center, they see other people telling, telling them that your business is a good one, that they should choose it. So that's just one, but another strategy we use is content marketing. So we're always building out pages for locations for local SEO to make sure that you have keywords you wanna rank for, 
like home care near me, but what cities do you serve? And then we also write lots of blogs and, and articles, which are great for the audience. It positions the home care owner as an authority, but it also shows Google that you have an active presence and you have lots of valuable information. It's just another indicator to Google. But you asked about, do you tell Google? There's some technical things you can do. You can submit what are called site maps to Google and things like that to, to make sure they know you exist. Yep. But for the most part, yeah, I think that's the key is that it really comes down to the content on your website and the words that you have in there. And so that's what it comes down to. It really comes down to the quality of your website and the content on that website that's going to attract people to your site. And then again, those Google reviews, those are going to help you in a great way as well. So I was thinking about, uh, so I, I think you said that probably the most common search is going to be you know, home care near me, or maybe if you're looking in Wellesley, Massachusetts, you might be saying, you know, home care, Wellesley, Massachusetts, or something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, one thing I've seen is that people looking for home care, they might Google for something different, like they might Google for visiting nurses, even though visiting nurses don't do non-medical care like they're looking for, and things like that. So I, do you have to be a little bit careful about, you know, thinking of what you're what your buyer might be searching for, even if it's not exactly on target with um, with what you know what you would say you do, and how do you deal with that? Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, Google, there's there's many instances where Google understands already. So if you did visiting nurses, they can kind of bridge the gap and know that you mean home care. But essentially, for us, and because we specialize in home care, we already do research and have tons of keywords that are good for both clients and caregivers for SEO. So we, we've already kind of scoured the market and figured out which terms are important, but that's good to know because a lot of times and this happens in any industry, you have industry jargon and you may call it like private duty. There's really, that's a common term in the industry, but it's not something that a person is gonna search for. They're not gonna search private duty home care. Um, and another thing to remember with your website is there's all different stages in the journey that somebody could be on looking for care. It could be an emergent need. Maybe they need it very soon. Another could be they're just doing research and figuring out their options. You want to have a way to capture each of those audiences. And then if it's more of a long term, that you want to nurture them. So give them something for free, put them on your email list, things like that. Okay, perfect. And so we've talked so far about attracting clients, but we said our premise for today was that it's just as important to attract caregivers as it is for clients. So what, what things are caregivers searching for uh, uh, you know, to, to find on your home care website? Well, I think you know, right now we're seeing more of a shift where they're less concerned with a paycheck. They need the paycheck, but people are looking for a meaningful job, something that's rewarding to them. And that can be challenging when you're, you're writing an ad on Indeed. I mean, Indeed is always one of the number one sources of, of caregiver applicants, which is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy because that's where everybody's putting their job openings. So I want to come back to that later. But on your website, if you have your jobs on your website or you even go as far as creating a career site, you can position yourself as the employer of choice. You can give them content which could include feedback and testimonials from other caregivers, other clients. But if you're able to attract people to your website that are looking for jobs, you can position yourself much better as that choice employer. So thinking about why did you get into this business, get some feedback from your current caregivers of why they chose you, why they've been there as long as they have, and then share that. That's one of the things I love about Cameron's tool because the, the ability to use that, we can only take them so far to get to the website, but now they've got another way to engage instantly by using Cameron's uh, live chat software, which we love because so many of our conversations about, are about, well, we've got all these applications on your website. You've got tons of them. Have you followed up? And they haven't. So trying to help them with that, Cameron provided a perfect solution because now they get instant gratification They've entered into the funnel, had a good experience, and then Cameron's team can and work them through that. Very, very good. Yeah, so I guess just a couple of things to uh, circle back on. So we did talk about, you know, what is SEO, that search engine optimization, and it, it probably is obvious to most people, but just to clarify it, 
Uh, Jason referred a couple times to keywords. So think of keywords as anything that somebody's typing into Google. And, uh, and, and also remember that the, you know, the Googling behavior, if that's the way of putting it these days, is that we're more and more asking questions. So, you know, so think about uh, those types of things. And, and also think about, uh, Jason talked about blog articles. So if you have, you know, multiple articles that are coming out of your website and you could focus on the different communities that you serve and, you know, and kind of have in there, um, you know, home care, uh, Wellesley, Massachusetts or home care need Massachusetts. That's another way of, you know, telling Google and telling your folks that you are serving those communities. So those are, those are a bunch of, uh, of great suggestions and ideas. All right, I'm going to shift over. We haven't really heard that much from Cameron since the beginning. And uh, so Cameron, put on your, put on your hat as, you know, back in the Nueva Care days and people are coming to your website. And so they finally, they get to this page, they found you, you won, you know, you made it to the first page of Google or they went and they found you on the second page of Google. They get to your site. What are, what are like some of those few things that, you know, you want to make sure your site does so it's inviting and engaging and they don't just click away in three seconds. Right, exactly. So from my experience, uh, we dealt with three types of customers and I'll give you an example of, of each one. As Jason mentioned, you know, you have to, you have to be familiar with your customer's journey. What, what is it that has prompted them to look for care? So uh, the first type was the type of customer needed urgent care. I'll give an example. Mom just had hip surgery. She's in the hospital, it's Friday, and she needs to be discharged. And by Saturday, they need care. So the children are in the hospital room and they are looking for care. Right in the hospital room, they start searching for, you know, home care agencies. And that's the type of client that usually wants to call you. So it is so important. I've, I've seen so many home care agency websites that you, you land on their page and you're like, where's the phone number? You have to keep looking and looking and looking. So that's when they hit the back button and you just lost the customer. So it is just, it, it is really a simple thing, but you just got to have a nice phone number big on the upper right hand somewhere that people can easily see it. So that was the first type of customers that urge to somebody who needs your help urgently. The second type of customer that we dealt with was somebody who's gone through the process of uh, realizing that they need care. It's taken a while. And those are usually uh, people who have parents with dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. Sometimes it takes years for them to actually start that process. Those people, uh, they don't want to call you right away. It's been years or months been going through the process. They want to engage with you. So for that, we found that our chat solution was really helpful. It, it just helped them continue their research process. And uh, they just wanted to you know, find out more information, like do you do 24 hours or do you do living or do you provide services in my area? What kind of caregivers do you have? What kind of training do they have? All of these questions, right? And there was a third type of customer who had just realized, again, I'll give an example that mom is um, you know, acting a little different. So these are people who are just beginning a very broad search. So for those people, we had a contact form and they just wanted to learn about Alzheimer's or something, right, that we're dealing with. So um, going back to your question, it, I think it's important to have mechanisms uh, in place on your website to handle all three situations. So what we had and what I see that you know, some successful um, agencies have is you know a prominent phone number, a contact form, and a live chat solution. So you kind of like handle uh, your three bases. And you, as as Jason mentioned, uh, it is really important to nurture all three. Uh, it is uh, it is kind of that that the, the, the two types of customers that are doing research sales choose you. I think they choose somebody who they feel comfortable with, and that's where nurturing comes in. All right, I love that. So we're gonna we're yeah. gonna come back to you in a minute, Cameron. So, yeah. um, but you know, one of the things that Jason said in the beginning is he said, you know, sometimes folks come to him and they say we're not getting visitors to our site, 
And the answer is, well, you're getting visitors, but they're just not staying on your site. And it sounds like you right. started talking about that. Um, and, you know, we talked about a term earlier, we're getting technical again, we talked about SEO search engine optimization, but then we have something called CRO. And that stands for conversion rate optimization. And so, so I guess, Jason, what's a conversion rate and how do you optimize your conversion rate? Well, I love it. I love talking about this stuff. So conversion, well, I'll start, let's go back to the recommendation of a restaurant. So let's say a friend recommended a restaurant. You're excited. It sounds great. You show up to the restaurant. It smells bad. And the staff is rude. I mean, within five or 10 seconds, you know, the, you've chosen the wrong place. So they got you to their location, but they didn't convert you into a customer. So that's conversion optimization is, well, what do they need to fix to change that? Now with restaurants, it's more commonly not, not as uh, obvious as that. It might be, well, everybody's buying food, but they're not buying appetizers. How do we get them to buy more appetizers? Mm -hmm. Things like that. So for a website, same thing. Are you getting traffic? But the goal is not to just get traffic. It's to get them to take action. So what kind of action do you want them to take? Now, traditionally, there's been three or we'll say two options. One would be subscribe to a newsletter, but that's not as exciting. So let's say two. They can call, which Cameron's 100% right. Have to have that phone number or way to contact you. Very obvious. But that's one way. They can call or they can fill out a form. Now we see a 10 to one. So for every one form you'll get, you'll get 10 phone calls. Mm -hmm. So the audience is much more likely to call, but now we've got this new option, which is the live chat, which I love. So there's three options, but conversion rate optimization is analyzing the ratio between the number of people that are visiting your site, comparing it to how many of them call, fill out a form, engage in a chat. Or subscribe to a newsletter. That's a conversion. So it's all about tightening up those ratios. And what's nice is you can use that same, we call it a marketing funnel. You use the same thing for clients and then use a, a new strategy, but it's still a conversion for an applicant. So you've got a lot of job seekers coming to your site. Are they applying to the jobs? How can you increase the number of applications? Well, wait, I'm going to go on a little tangent off of our masterclass topic today. And something that kind of irks me a little bit is that caregivers sometimes go to the home care website. And in order to express interest in a job with this home care agency, they, they hit this big roadblock of, you know, here is a whole bunch of forms you need to fill out for us to consider you. And in this, you know, day and age with the battle for caregivers, is that is that the best way to go about it, or what? You know, what happens in that situation? And uh, yeah, but maybe when we'll go to Cameron, what happens there when somebody sees that roadblock of, you know, of seven pages to fill out? What are they going to do? Uh, we had the same thing on on our agency website. We had an application form, and uh, what I found out uh, uh, was that ninety percent. I would probably say even 95% of our caregivers were cell phone. They didn't have a desktop. They didn't even have a desktop computer at their home. So they were exclusively using almost cell phones. And those forms were not even compatible with cell phones. Mm -hmm. So when they clicked on that form, you, you get these little ant size, little letters and words you can't even read. So they didn't use that. Uh, we found where we found success was that they did get engaged uh, with the agents because it was just, it was a two minute process. It was, they didn't have to fill out a form. Basically we asked them for their information. And then once we find out they were interested and they, they were qualified, we asked them like how many years of experience do they have and you know, where do they live? Really simple qualifications. Then that lead was sent to the hiring manager and that they would follow up with them. So we made the process simpler for them because of the fact that these guys just they they just have cell phones they don't have desktop computers and all these forms that you see on agency websites they're most most of them are not compatible with that they don't look good on cell phones so that's why there's real real little traction with um, uh, caregivers completing uh, you know a 20 question uh, application online yeah exactly and just to you know provide some industry you know, knowledge and know-how that might be a little bit outside the scope again of today is that a lot of, especially if you're in a big city, it's likely that your caregivers 
might even be working for your competitors. I mean, you love your caregivers who, you know, get 40 hours a week with you, but some of them want to work 70 and they might be working 40 for you and 30 for someone else. But, you know, it does come down to their, their desires in life and, and in revenue. And they might be um, really looking to fill a little niche. It's like, you know, Hey, I have this, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday case. I do something with my daughter's school on Tuesdays. I'm, I'm looking for, you know, a Thursday case or a night case. And, that sort of thing. So a trick, and actually I have to give some credit to Cameron, we talked about this in an earlier one, is if on the chat, you know, the person can say, hey, I'm looking to work in, you know, Wellesley, or I'm looking to work in 02481 on these times, <clears throat> and you capture that, you have some valuable pieces of information. And even, even after that, um, when you engage them and say, you know, hey, we, we'd love to, you know, have you, you know, we really want to, um, work with you and we think we could find some shifts for you and that type of thing, then that would be kind of step two. Then you get the forms, but don't let the forms, you know, kind of get in the way of them engaging with you in the first place. Uh, and, you know, and if you could right there on the chat, you know, they could, they could say, Hey, I want to work in this zip code on these times, then you've captured that and you could keep them in your database, even if they're not a caregiver. And then let's say a case comes in from, you know, somebody's looking in, in for a caregiver in that region, you can even go back in your database and say, you know what, let me see if I have anybody who applied or came to our chat and said, I want to work in this zip code in these times. And then you could reach out to them with their perfect situation and say, hey, I, you know, you came to us, not sure if you remember us, but, you know, you came to our agency and said, you're interested in this zip code at these times. And we happen to have a case right there. Is that something you're still interested in or do you know somebody? And then that keeps the conversation going. So um, so that's great. And then just another thing that I just thought of and reminded myself of is that, you know, the, the caregivers that stay the longest are not the ones who come in from indeed.com or the ones who, um, you know, who even come in through my CNA jobs.com. They're the ones who get referred by your other caregivers. Those are the ones who stick with you the longest. So it's kind of interesting. I mean, I would think that as a home care agency owner, you're thinking that the main message on the top of your website should be, you know, we provide great care, but if you, you know, think, think about it, if the first thing that people see is, you know, our caregivers love working here, that, that probably makes a bigger impact on the potential, you know, future client and on caregivers who are applying than anything else. But, um, but listen, let me, let me get off my tangent. I'm going to go back to Jason for a minute. And, you know, you gave us a really good, like, you know, kind of a tip or like what the, what the cool kids call like a hack for SEO and like getting, you know, getting those customer referrals helps on your SEO side that, you know, really says something to Google, but is there anything on the conversion rate optimization or there any like little, you know, tricks or tips or, you know, kind of hacks as they say to, you know, to help to get more people to convert? Yeah, definitely. We actually have a uh, recruitment marketing checklist that's got a hundred, actually a hundred, over 190 different things you can do to, to optimize your, your digital recruiting, which I love. We offer it for free, but I wanted to just mention something you talked about earlier. It just reminds me of this, I guess, secret that I learned as a recruiter. And that is that recruiting is sales. We don't call them salespeople, but recruiters, professional recruiters understand that finding somebody to apply for your job is not just a matter of putting out a job opening and saying, here's my list of demands and you will fill out 100 pages of paperwork. It doesn't work like that. Uh, so that people need to be convinced and the process needs to be easy. So think about the experience you want a potential client to have. You roll out the red carpet. You don't make them fill out tons of paperwork. First, they wanna know who you are and get a feel for you. But yet, thinking about recruiting caregivers through that sales mentality, that's a killer. If you have this huge application, they're just going to move on. They're not going to convert. So we recommend having a real short form application, we call it, name, email, phone number. Now, this does require more follow-up on, on the home care agency staff of recruiting, but truthfully, that's the way that this works, is to get that opportunity to talk to them and nurture them and convince them. That's what you want, is that short form application. So another hack that I love I'm going to talk about two, actually. One will be online, but 
having your job openings on your website, on your URL. So you posting jobs on Indeed, that helps their SEO. You're giving them tons of free content. And we look at like Home Care Pulse benchmarking study and it says Indeed is the number one source. Well, that's self-fulfilling prophecy. That's where everybody's posting their jobs. The content in a job posting, or let's call it a job advertisement, not a job description, but a job advertisement. The information in that is just as valuable to Google for your clients. So now you've got a constant source of new information on your website in the form of job openings. So that's a trigger to Google. Now you've maybe doubled or even quadrupled your traffic because now you're getting more caregivers coming to your site. Hmm. That's a, a uh, let's say, indicator to Google that you're a popular site. So. The same terminology, and I love that you said keywords because that's such a, a misnomer. It is key like phrases, but if you're talking about come work for our great home care team, home care agency, you're using all these different keywords in your job openings, that can really help you get traffic from clients. Now, another thing that I, I like to think of is we, we recently, and I feel their desperation, but we were driving through Sarasota, we see a sign at a restaurant that said, now hiring anybody and everybody. Now they're desperate, but it doesn't really make you want to eat there. You're thinking, well, that could be a bit of a safety issue. I can imagine the food's not very good. There's a way to do this, and you already said it, but there's a way to do this that actually very much could impress a potential client. So there's no reason to be uh, skittish about saying you're hiring. You're growing. You're popular. You've got so many happy clients, you need more caregivers. So be okay with recruiting on your site and just make sure it's not appearing desperate or that, oh yeah, we're a tough place to work. It's very negative and no one wants to work here. That's why we're hiring. It's a message. Perception is reality. So I'll just make it real simple. Get those jobs on your site and then you can be very creative. Use your imagination on how to position yourself to those caregivers and then get them on the phone or get them talking to, to someone on Cameron's team. Fantastic. All right. So Cameron, we're going to jump back to you. And I really never gave you the chance yet in this, uh, in, you know, in this podcast to talk about what some of those key benefits are to live chat. So, you know, kind of take us through what happens when somebody comes to that site and, you know, what, what is live chat going to do for you? And by the way, is live chat the same thing as like, you know, sometimes you go to a site and this little thing pops up and it's like, you know, hey, I'm here to help you, but you could tell it's not like a, a live person. So maybe take us through, you know, all of that and those kinds of uh, important differences between kind of the, the chat bot and then the live chat. Yeah. So let, let me just take one step back and, and, and tell you why we, we did come up with a live chat idea for my agency. And the reason was when we looked at our Google Analytics, we saw that we have a lot of traffic but we also noticed our bounce rate was so huge. So, and then I started like thinking why, why, why? Because we're spending actually a lot of money. We were spending like about five or six thousand dollars a month. We you know for all of our marketing efforts to get just people, people to our site, right? That was paid ads, uh, SEO, face-to-face -face marketing. I had a full-time salesperson, so all these things was generating a lot of traffic, but. The I started doing some research and was like, wow, 90% of visitors just leave uh, our website within like 10 seconds. So I'm like, we need to have a better engagement mechanism. So I, you know, that's, that's where the idea came from. So we put a live chat on our website and I trained my own people to start engaging through the live chat. And that was the, the big difference between a live chat and a chat bot is that the chat bot is really a is a form and you can see that in you know a lot of websites have it and you click on this uh, little button and the form comes up and the first thing they ask is your name your email address and, and and your phone number so it's really a way to capture your information and it is really difficult at least i haven't seen it yet uh, to engage in a conversation with a chat bot i've seen demos that look really impressive but when it comes to home care and healthcare related situation, I don't think we are there yet for a AI chatbot to really talk to you about your mom's situation. So it's, it's just, it's not there yet. So people make a huge difference. And when people are behind the live chat, 
and they are trained about home care. They understand, you know, what Alzheimer's is. They understand uh, hip surgery. They understand all these things about home care. Then it makes a big difference to have the conversation that the customer or the caregiver, actually, they feel comfortable. They feel comfortable talking to you. So, I mean, th there's like three things that you need for customers and caregivers to get engaged with their agency. They have to know you, they trust, like you, and they have to trust you. So those are the three elements that we try to do that within two minutes. So uh, we don't jump in and ask for like, hey, what is your name? What's your phone number? What's your email address? That's like, that's just people hang up. They don't, they don't like that. We try to help them in both uh, situations if they're looking for work or if they're looking for care. And, and once we feel that they're comfortable with us, then we ask them, hey, you know, do you want us to uh, have our hiring, our care manager or the hiring manager contact? And then we get their information. So it's a real uh, true conversation. And our goal is to help people who visit, uh, you know, the home care agency websites. And, and we found that to be successful for us. And we are finding that you know, to be successful for the clients that, you know, they have that, um, that solution on the website. Yeah, that's really, really, uh, really compelling. And, you know, and interestingly, when you first came out with the company, you had a different brand. We'll forget all about it. We won't mention it anymore. But now <laughs> you've, actually, you've actually called the company Aid Quest, right? right? And exactly. so, you know, so it's kind of interesting as we talk about this concept of, you know, who are you really trying to engage? You didn't call it, you know, Home Care Client Quest. You called it Aid Quest, right? So it's really all about, you know, the help. And I guess that, you know, kind of connotes the, the aid that you're providing to the, to the family, but also, you know, the home care aids uh, themselves. So I think that's really compelling. All right. Well, listen, I, I think we've captured a lot here, but, um, you know, we, I, I'm going to make an analogy back to Cameron's book, Caring for Millions. He talked about when he was a small agency and he was doing most of the things, you know, himself that he, you know, he had to focus, right? So it's like, you know, hmm, we don't have enough clients. Let's go after clients. And then they would try to go after clients and they wouldn't have enough caregivers. And then it would be like, oh my gosh, let's go after caregivers. You know, we don't have enough caregivers. And then the next thing they wouldn't be recruiting clients. And then when they got to a certain scale, they were able to find that balance. And I think that, um, you know, here, I, I want to relate that back to how Jason started us today. He said, you know, it's either they're not finding your site or, you know, they are finding your site and they're not converting. So, so let's talk about, you know, how do these mechanisms, like the conversion mechanisms, like the live chat and having your phone number there and the form, you know, how do those complement the search side? And I'll go back to Jason for that. Well, I want to second what Cameron said, you know, chat bots as a marketer, as a digital marketer, I thought they were the coolest thing. Um, I love implementing them, talking about them. They don't work. They, they just, uh, and, and I, the more people I've talked to, they've had a bad experience with a chat bot. So not live chat. They're not talking to a live person. The, the one I can, that's closest to home is my business partner. His power went out. Uh, he was having some construction done. He has an Airbnb. He has four guests there. They're on vacation. His power goes out. There's no way to contact the power company. Goes to their website. It's a chat bot and he's not getting anywhere. So people have had these bad experiences. So Cameron's live chat is wonderful. So it changes that. And it is a perfect first interaction because now you're trying to convince this potential client or caregiver that you're better, you're hands-on, you you engage. Well, you're not dishing them off to a robot. You're immediately available. So I like that. But you know, to your to your broader question about how how does conversion uh, help or how does it complement the traffic? Is that the question? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, it's everything has to work together. So we, we mentioned how Providentia builds websites, but really what we do is build a comprehensive strategy to attract people to your site and then to convert them. So it's always a, a measure of both and looking at where can we get more traffic and where can we get more conversions how can we give uh, better offers? You know, changing things as simple as, I see this on a lot of home care websites, uh, call us and get a free in-home assessment. Now you pretty much already need to be 100% sure you want home care to think that that's valuable. This is if uh, a dentist said, get a free exam. Well, what if you're just looking around? That requires some discomfort on your part. 
So maybe offering something like the 10 questions to ask before hiring the wrong caregiver as a free download. You've positioned yourself as an expert. You've given them something free. In exchange, you've got their email. Now you can nurture them. Uh, so th things like that, coming up with new strategies to convert. You got them to the website. You know in your heart that you provide wonderful service, but how do you tell people? Well, it starts with that first interaction. It starts with the material that you create. Um, so all of it works together is, I guess, the takeaway. So it can be daunting, but that's why we created that checklist. It's like you don't have to do 190 things, but you start chipping away at it and you'll see results. Fantastic. And over to you, Cameron, same question. How do you get that balance between attracting people to your site and converting them? I think Jason is that right. And I want to put a huge emphasis on nurturing. I, I, I can go back and think of so many examples that from the first interaction with a customer, it took probably six months sometimes for that customer to be ready. Again, we're dealing with different types of customers. Some customers have a huge long journey from the moment they think they need care until the time they started. And if you stay with them and staying with them, I don't mean, no, just make sure they hear from you. It could be as simple as a monthly newsletter or something like that, right? And I, I can just go back and think about, wow, this customer, it took about six months. And finally she decided, and it became a 24 seven customer. So it was like a huge, huge uh, uh, revenue increase for the business. So nurturing, it's really important. You, and I know some agencies, they, they want customers like tomorrow, but it like, it's not always like that. And the higher value customers that you get are usually the ones that have a need for more of again, situations like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and dementia, because a hip surgery client stays with you for maybe three weeks, and they're fine, and they go, you know, they go back. So uh, nurturing is just key to converting your uh, visitors, your prospects into, you know, future customers. Perfect. All right, well, listen, we're going to bring this to a close. And most of our listeners, what we're finding uh, from the feedback we get on the Home Care Heroes website or on the he Home Care Heroes podcast, that is, is they say, you know, when I listen to the podcast as I'm driving in my car, I'm going out to meet a client, that kind of thing. So we'll put on the podcast web page, you know, all of your contact information and things like that. But I guess in the shortest way possible, since they're listening to this in the car. So Jason, what's the best way that they could remember to you know, to reach out to Providentia Marketing after they get off of this podcast? Uh, easiest way is just to Google us or Google Home Care Digital Marketing, and we'll come up. Uh, we practice what we preach, so we're always trying to show up for those terms. But providentiamarketing.com. And uh, in there, if you go there, you can get those two free guides as well. We have a marketing checklist and a home care recruitment marketing checklist. Fantastic. Okay, and then Cameron, same question over to you. How do people get in touch with AidQuest? Well, I think the easiest way would be to just uh, type in 8quest.com. That's A-I-D-Q-U-E-S-T. And then you will uh, see our website and you'll have lots of information there. We have eBooks you can download, learn, and uh, just browse around and, uh, and learn about, you know, different types of marketing and live chat and all that information on the website. And I hope if I go to 8quest, there'll be live chat for me. Will there be? <laughs> <laughs> great question great question we're working on that <laughs> okay all right i didn't mean to stump you there but i love it okay so guys we're going to wrap up for today we'll put all these notes in and we'll have a uh, you know lots of links to the information but you know really this has been a, i think a fantastic master class let me thank you again jason and cameron for your thank great you. uh inputs on how to get people to your website and how to keep them there and get them to convert and become your customers and your caregivers because that's really the key to the future of home care. And with that, we'll call it a day. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you so much it. for the opportunity. It was great seeing you yeah, guys. Right really enjoyed it. See you. Thanks for joining us today on the Home Care Heroes podcast. Home Care Heroes is produced by Ancoda, the software for the heroes of home care. You can listen to back episodes by visiting forhomecareheroes.com. That's the number four, then the words homecareheroes.com.